I got a good one for you guys. So I was working on this as a side project. I implemented it and I tested it with Telegram and it works. So I wanna talk about seven automations you can use that includes your phone. Now I have an iPhone, so the majority of these automations will rely on the Shortcuts app. But I know some of you are very industrious, so please let me know if in the comments if there are any Android equivalent to the iPhone specific automations that I call out in this video. Just one more thing before we begin. Uh, this is the playground inside Node Red, or at least I created this. It's called the playground, that's what I'm calling it at least. This is where we can test out a lot of our automations. This is the webhook automation with ID tests, and um, essentially this is a debugger. And this is how we're gonna essentially read the different webhooks that get executed and the values that they provide. Um, there's also uh, another program that I'm using called Postman, which is here. Um, and this is how we can kind of also test to ensure that everything is working. Um, you would have seen this in my previous webhook video. Uh, go and check that out if you haven't seen it. But here I'm just changing it. I just added, uh, just fired the message. And as you can see, it's the same message here. So the webhook is indeed working. All right, cool. So. Let's begin. Now, using a combination of shortcuts and webhooks, you can vertically scale the number of triggers at your disposal and open a wide range of use cases. For example, let's look at the typical time trigger. In Home Assistant, you can trigger an automation at a specific time, much like an alarm. These automations work great, but they're not flexible and often needs to be paired with other conditions for it to work well. For example, I created an automation that goes off every evening to telling my daughter that it's time to re get ready for a bath. But sometimes we start her bath routine early and in the middle of her bath, the automation goes off. Realistically, though the time works well, a better version of this automation would be to incorporate, let's say, a humidity sensor and use that in conjunction with the time trigger. In the same way the humidity sensor provides an additional layer to improve that simple automation, your phone can unlock a lot of layers for you. So consider this idea. Let's say you have, again, a same time trigger that fires in the morning at, let's say, 7.30 a.m. This automation works well, but you want it to be more flexible to allow you to trigger the automation if you get up earlier without having to manually update the automation. Now, what can we do? We can leverage different modes within our phone. In the Shortcuts app, under Personal Automations, when waking up, we can trigger the webhook that will start the automation. Now, if we get up before the alarm and you happen to set your phone to wake up, the automation can trigger early without updating the automation at all. That was an easy one. Let's look at idea two. This is the plug unplug trigger. Now, I've talked about this trigger in a previous video. Plugging and unplugging your phone is another trigger at your disposal. And what's really cool about this is how smooth and inconspicuous it is. In my humble opinion, this is an S tier trigger. I personally have it to activate my bedtime routine, turning off lights, arming the house, announcing my schedule, so on and so forth. And if you want to see details around this automation, you can check the previous video that I made. I go into depth about how webhooks work and how this automation works as well. But for here, I'll go over the highlights of it. Using the Shortcuts app, I create two personal automations, one for when the phone is plugged in and one for when it's unplugged. The action for both is the same. They call the same webhook, they do the same things. However, the payload given is little different and it allows the automation to differentiate what to do. Now, the fact that we can pass payloads to the webhooks is an example of how automation designs can scale in a maintainable fashion. You don't need to build a webhook for each automation. If automations are similar or share a common theme, you can actually reuse the same webhook and pass it payloads that will help differentiate its actions in Home Assistant. Okay. This idea is pretty dope. You can activate a webhook when you receive text messages. In Shortcuts, you have a personal automation when you receive message. It also allows you to get a little bit more specific and activate when the specific individual mentions something very specific. Additionally, the Shortcut app allows you to access contents of the text in your automation, which means you can send the text message to Home Assistant. Now, there is one downside to this, which is why I personally don't use this, and that's the Shortcut app will not automatically trigger the automation when you receive messages for security reasons, I'm sure. You'll actually have to click the notification to trigger the automation. And now for some of you, this may be good enough, which is why I felt it was reason enough to add this into here. The bigger reason why I felt like I should mention this is because this opens up a ton of possibilities and it's a few steps short of 
really creating a Home Assistant chatbot. With Home Assistant doing its whole year of voice thing and integrating with ChatGPT and including more NLP, using webhooks give you an avenue outside of Home Assistant app to communicate with Home Assistant, which segues perfectly into the next idea. Now, up until this point, the triggers I've explained have been kind of passive. Sure, right, you could do something to activate the triggers, but the activations of the automations were more of a convenient side effect of normal everyday interactions, like plugging in your phone, for instance. However, the next few ideas are more active, where you're purposefully setting out to trigger some kind of automation. All right, guys, clutch your pearls, because this is going to get wild. The iPhone gives us this wonderful command, tick, tick, text transcribes what you say aloud into text and passes the result to the next action. Mm. This could not be more perfect. For weeks, I've been trying to find a way to speak to Home Assistant through Google, but the experience has been very sloppy and it's just quite frankly a hot mess. But right here, man. So using the skills we acquired so far, we can create a shortcut that starts out with the dictate command and then use a webhook. And if you notice in the payload, we can pass the dictated text. This is getting good. Okay, okay, okay. So now typically you can add shortcuts to your home screen or you can trigger it using let's say personal automations like what we've been doing in the past three ideas. But you can activate shortcuts exclusively with Siri. Yes, this can be a totally hands-free experience. Let's name this something very purposeful like talk to home assistant. Now we can say, hey Siri, talk to home assistant. Damn, I love it when a plan comes together, my guy. Now, I probably don't need to tell you what this means, but for those of you just getting into home automation, here's a few secret ninjutsus we just unlocked. For those using ChatGPT, you can now speak to it instead of typing like a Philistine. For anyone experimenting with, let's say, Raspy Assistant, which is an offline voice assistant uh, for a home assistant, this can decouple you from needing a mic in every room. Wait, 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 hold on, hold. If any of you think that any of these ideas that I've mentioned so far were good, I need you to tap that subscribe button and like this video. Also, I want to hear from you all. With these ideas, what automations or setups are you planning to create? I know you all have some really good ideas, so don't be stingy. Okay, so I feel like with that last idea, it was kind of top shelf, hide it from your spouse type of good. So um, I'm gonna tone it down just a little bit before hitting y'all with another heavy one. Now, this is a simple idea that I hear about occasionally, uh, but for the sake of people new to home automation, I'm going to call it out again, um, and that's NFCs. Typically, you can use your phone to trigger NFCs, so technically it falls into the theme of this video, but I do want to point out some interesting observations about it. Now, if there's only one person using NFCs, then how you choose to set it up, whether through Home Assistant or Apple Shortcuts, it doesn't matter. If you want something a little bit more long-term, then when you create automation, and you add them to NFCs, you may want to use Home Assistant application directly. This way, if you change the automations in the background, everyone automatically have access to those changes. And technically, they wouldn't have to know how Home Assistant work. They would just need it on their phones. Now, if none of this made sense, let me know in the comments and I can create a video that talks about NFC implementation strategies specifically. Okay, so this idea is a little bit weird and it's a bit niche. But assuming you have Room Assistant or use ES Presence, is it ES Presence or is it ESP Presence? Let me check and find out. Yeah, ES Presence, cool. So for this idea, you can create an automation that you can trigger from your smart devices like Alexa or Google and basically ask it to find your phone. Turn on Find Michael's phone. Sure, turning on the Find Michael phone. You're currently in the office. Nice. I won't go into detail how this works or how you're able to make this routine available on your Google or Alexa devices. Like you can do it, but if that's something that's interesting to you, again, put that in the comments, let me know, and then I can create a video for it or kind of respond with some links. But uh, the idea here is that we need the routines or the automations visible to Google or Alexa. And then when you talk to them and say, hey, 
run, find my phone, for instance, then it will simply trigger your Home Assistant automation. Okay, so this is the last idea. And since it's rather complex, I'm not gonna go into full detail, but I'll explain it enough so you can understand and try it for yourself. And as always, if you want me to make a video on how I set this all up and what I'm about to explain, subscribe and leave a comment. Okay, so in the third idea, I hinted that it was a step away from being a chatbot. Well, you can actually create a chatbot using Telegram. So this will work for both iOS and Android. Using the Telegram integration, you can send commands and free text, which will get picked up by Home Assistant, very similar to how the webhook works. So not only can you speak to Home Assistant through Siri, you can also type to Home Assistant using Telegram. But let me turn up the heat a little more on this. Since Node Red in Home Assistant allows me to enter my nerdy avatar state, I installed a natural language processor engine and taught Home Assistant how to handle commands. I can say things like, get the baby ready for her bath or baby bath time. And because of the training data, the NLP is able to assign the intent to my words, which can then be used to trigger the automations. So I was working on this as a side project. I tested it with Telegram and it works. So here's an example of it in action. Okay, so when I type in this command, the automation starts the preconditioning of the car. Additionally, Home Assistant will tell me how much time is left. This is a 30 minute warning. And every time half the previous time is remaining, it will update me again. For example, if I tell Home Assistant that I'm leaving in 10 minutes, then five minutes later, it'll tell me I have five minutes left. Then two minutes later, it'll tell me I have three minutes left. And then after that, it'll tell me time is up. All of this is possible because for each automation I create, I can optionally add training data to teach NLP what I might say and the intent behind it. Additionally, I can add intent triggers to existing automations to fire when the intent is detected. There's so much more here, but I can save that for another video if that interests you guys. I'm a software engineer and a nerd. So do I expect you to go this far? Yes, don't be lazy. No, I'm just kidding. There's actually a simpler path for you. Home Assistant Conversation. Currently, this is only available by pressing the microphone in the front end, supported browsers only, so no iOS. But as I just taught you, webhooks will rescue you. So using Siri or Telegram, you can send your text to the Home Assistant via the webhook and call the conversation process service with the transcribed text. Here, Home Assistant has given you the tools to create your own training data and actually build how your Home Assistant should respond. So was this all helpful to you all? Did you already know all of this or was there something here that surprised you? Let me know in the comments and subscribe if you don't mind. Okay, bye.